What's going on friends? I'm so glad that you're here. If you don't know me already, my name is Lauren. I am a former teacher turned homeschooling mom. So I'm sharing all of the things that I've taken from the classroom and applied to our home learning and sharing it with you guys to hopefully give you some inspiration or guidance or just some ideas. Today we're doing another planning video. So I'm going to share with you guys all of the standards from Texas that we follow along. We don't follow a program or specific curriculum. Instead, I create all of the resources and learning topics that we're going to cover. And then we have a number of activities or games or outings that we use to solidify those concepts and further practice them until we master them. Today, I wanted to switch it up a little bit in terms of how I'm positioned. I have my notes down here so that I can just show you in real time what I'm talking about. And hopefully that will be a little more understandable than having to readjust and show you here and there and everywhere, but I will also be including some clips so that you can see things that I've already done or that I do after I get done filming this portion right here. Um, so first, let's start off with our phonics and reading. So as a lot of you know, we have been working on our sight words and just really solidifying a lot of the phonetic roles and um, spelling patterns and different things like that. And so I created a resource not only to practice with the sight words and with spelling patterns, specifically affixes or inflected endings, but I also wanted to add in a piece of writing. So I'm gonna show you guys something that I created on Canva. And here's that all printed out. And so there's a spot to rewrite the word above. And then I changed the color so that the ending will be a little bit different or whatever spelling rule that we're specifically working on. And then I just mixed them up in the page for, like I said, some more practice exposure or just to really get those concepts of the spelling rules and different phonetic patterns correct. Okay, in our last video, I shared with you guys some of our learning activities that we've been using that goes along with learning about interdependent relationships, symbiosis, and food chains and food webs. So here's one of the books that I found at Five Below and it has the reading level on it. And then on the back side, there's actually an explanation of what those reading levels mean. So we have been using this book to kind of refer back to and practice some note taking and like recalling facts. And so along with that, I printed off a little sheet for us to record the facts on and categorized it by different animals. So by we, I mean that I have one and my son has one, and so we've been working on those together at night to go back and reread, practice reading, and record some of those facts that I was talking about. So we will be completing this in the upcoming week, and we've also planned for a trip to an aquarium nearby. So when I looked online, I was telling you guys that I wanted to look into it a little bit more to see what the biggest bang for our buck was going to be, and we found one that not only has um, sea animals and sea life and things that a traditional aquarium would have, but they also have a lot of land animals and opportunities to feed the animals. So we're going to definitely visit that. Um, it's only like 20-ish minutes away, so that worked out perfectly. So that is something that you will see me add into our calendar or our weekly plan in just a little bit. But like I said, first just want to kind of give you a glimpse and then we'll talk about how I actually plan and record and organize all of these things in just a bit. In my socialization video, I was telling you guys how I really want to focus on keeping our outings and things that we do outside of the house as very fun and just supplemental to the things that we are learning within the four walls of our homeschooling room and things that kind of come up conversationally that help us with learning those different topics. So we're going to keep the aquarium as just a fun family type of outing. I know that I shared with you guys in my semester shifts that I really wanted to keep our family outings to like once a month. We really enjoyed doing that in the past, especially last semester when we kind of picked up that habit. So we're going to use that as just a fun family outing. I'm not going to add any learning component to it. To it. Um, and I'm hoping that that will just be like a bow on the type of unit study that we've been doing when it comes to 
um, animal relationships and interdependence and things like that. So we are going to just keep it fun. I'm not going to add anything um, school related on top of that. Okay, and the next step for math, um, I think that I have already shared with you guys that I found these little game cards. I found these on Teachers Pay Teachers, so it came in a bundle. I'm looking at my computer over here because I have the whole document pulled up, but we will only be using one of the game cards because we've already covered some of the other concepts of games that are included in this, but it is a very good resource. I like that they have the instructions on the game. There really aren't any pieces. The only thing that you'll need are counters and dice to play the game. This specific one that I'm about to show you is focusing on expanded form addition, and so it's doing three digit numbers. And then there are two little game cards on here that you can play with and practice that concept. So that's something that we are going to include. I do need to still laminate this, so we'll take care of that later in just a second as well. And then last but not least of our big topics that I'm going to share with you is Spanish. And so since we have been working on animals, we kind of went back and reviewed some of the stuff that we have already worked on before we jump into a new group of words. So the next set that I'm going to be working on are farm animals. So here's what the sheet looks like. If you have already seen this book, then you know that I have really been loving it and it's more like we can pick and choose what we wanna work on. I will leave the Amazon link for this in the description below if you're interested. It's very inexpensive and there are lots of opportunities for writing, um, like tracing practice, copy work, those types of things. Um, for those of you who have younger kids, this is a really fun and like kind of extra piece that you can do as well as learning the language. So we've really enjoyed ha having this. A lot of the books that I've seen have, you know, the information in there, but there's not really like matching or writing or um, repetition of practicing the words, but this one has that. In the back of this, they actually have a full glossary of all of the Spanish words and the English word right next to it. So from A to Z in the back, everything that the book covers is included in here. So that's nice as well to have that extra little resource. Even when you get finished with the book, this is something that can always be referred back to. For social studies, we're gonna focus on choosing a state and then really taking a deep dive into that state, the geographic location, the animals, everything that has to do with that state. And I think that will be a good way to carry us from what we've been learning right now and really kind of take an exploration of the United States. First, starting with Alaska, I briefly mentioned it in my last video of what we're kind of doing right now and what our home learning is currently looking like, but I shared with you guys that we have these United States flashcards and I got these from the Target Bullseye Spot or whatever it's called now, and they have different facts on there about all of the states. There are cards in there with some questions and things like that. So we're going to use that to help kind of guide what we are learning about as far as our country goes. And so I'm just gonna go in order. I think we're just gonna go like in alphabetical order, take a week to do each of the different states. So something that comes along with that and tying into our food chain and food webs and interdependent animal relationships is going to be all of the wildlife that Alaska has. So we are going to tie the two concepts together and kind of marry our social studies with our science and really take a deep dive into animals and um, categorizing them, talking about how energy is transferred from group to group in a food chain. So that's our plan for right now. I will show you guys what my actual physical plan that I have is going to look like. Now, as always, I say that you should be adjusting and changing and tweaking your plan if you need to. So I mostly get this down so that I can remember what I'm working on each day and what our goal for the end of the week is. If we have to change some things around, or for instance, we have basketball on Fridays now, and so our Friday is going to look a little bit different than the rest of the week, but that's perfectly fine. So I'm only going to 
be writing like our big concepts from day to day, but I did want to show you guys this printable and this graphic organizer or lesson planner because in a couple of weeks, I will be having some physical homeschooling planners for you to choose from that will be available for purchase. So I want to show you the one that I'm picking to use today. And then when those are available, I will definitely be showing you guys a video so I can like kind of, it'll feel more like real time that I can do a flip through and show you what those planners and journals include. One of the phonics and spelling activities that we have are these little cards. There's a dry erase marker in here, and then each card has spaces to write the word down below with the correct size of the letter in each of them. So you can secure them back, and then they just close like that so nothing will fall out. None of your little pieces will go anywhere. So those have been wonderful to be able to leave out. So let's go ahead and I will show you the planner page that I'm going to be using. It has all of the topics at the top. And then I just numbered them one through four on the side to be Monday through Thursday. Like I said, if anything else switches around or changes, I don't feel compelled to add another day or take anything off. Whatever we get to, we get to. If not, it'll just roll to the next week. Okay, here's a final look at my plan for next week. As always, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you being here. I will definitely keep you guys in the loop with how this all plays out next week with our learning, as well as our trip to the aquarium. If you have not already, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that one. Give this a thumbs up if this kind of video is your jam, and I will see you in the next one.